Hello, I'm Angus Douglas and I'm Principal of the ICBI and I wanted to tell you just very briefly how our work has impacted our treatment of uh, cancer and other conditions and very topically COVID. So for, first of all I just basically want to answer the questions that many of you ask is what about the immune system? What really is going on? We hear about neutralising antibodies and occasionally we hear about T-cells. Well, in our role in researching immunology for cancer, what we have discovered is that it is the innate or the basic immune response is far more important than targeting specific antigens with specific antibodies. And that all the vaccines that we have tried, that all the ones that target specific antibodies in cancer, not one of them have been effective in the long term. And when we look back, the ones that are most effective are those that alter the dynamics and boost the T-cell response. Let me explain. It would appear that the immune system, with regards to the entry, so when viruses come in or they're attacked or something foreign comes in, they react in two ways, in a balance, a dynamic equilibrium, a bit like the Conrad attractor in nonlinear mathematics, and I'd be very fascinated how relevant this is. Initially, you have two types of T cells. The first one, the first one is associated with cell-mediated immunity and is associated with cytokines such as interleukin-2 and uh, um, gamma interferon, etc., and many others. And the other one is associated more with cytokines that boost antibody responses and what we call inflammatory responses, non-specific inflammatory responses. Normally they sit in perfect equilibrium, but when they come in with a virus, this responds and pours out messages to the uh, natural killer cells, the gamma delta T cells, the non-specific T cells, and then they send out messages to the Th2 cells, which are the ones sending out messages for which antibodies need to be made, etc. So this is a very first response, and this takes some days, weeks to follow, and in that secondary response comes the specific ones, and that really is the basic of vaccination. But what we've shown is, it is this one that is most important. Now, why is it most important? Well, very interestingly, and this is why it is very relevant, to COVID today, is that this response, this is age here, this response is really high as soon as you're born. And when you're a child, it's very high. And it remains high in your 30s, 40s, 50s. But around 55, it really starts to fall off. So by the time you're 70, unless you're doing something about it, it is very, very low. And what is interesting is what I call the reverse butterfly wing effect. The incidence of cancer kind of mirrors this, and the incidence of cancer rises as you get older, because, not necessarily causal, but it's hard to ignore, because your initial innate T-cell response is getting weaker as you get older, you're getting this increased rise in cancer. But not only cancer, we're getting it because we're seeing an increase in autoantibody and autoinflammatory responses. And that's just because while this is being suppressed, for reasons we don't know, it's just perhaps burning out, this response tries to compensate. So it overcompensates. So you're more likely to get uh, an antibody response and inflammatory response. So with regards to our work that we found with cancer, and it applies to COVID, it is very interesting that we found that this non-specific boosting of the T-cell response, which you can do when it comes down here, we can boost it so it will not decline as much. This can be done, and this is just all retrospective work of all the work we funded in trials with ICVI, we found that this could be maintained by maintaining good vitamin D3 levels which also seem to be very low in the community and they fall in people as they get older and they don't go out as much, etc. And the other one that came out, I don't have time to go into this in great detail, is but there is a signal that people who've had BCG in the past, this is an ordinary program, or those who had it boosted in one of our vaccine programs, their T-cell response was also much better and uh, 
uh, kept going. And first of all, with clinical cases, we found that they were getting much better responses with the age of the pinnace. And a group that um, with Stanford and Rook and John Grange, they tried to improve on BCG to really boost this response for TB, and they succeeded. They found an agent called Mycobacterium vacai, which we worked on for about uh, seven, eight years, and we found very good clinical responses with him. Some patients with melanoma literally just starting to give them the shots of this vaccine just went into the skin, uh, would correlate with the small lesions disappearing. And what it correlated with was these cytokines going up and these ones here going down. So we started to realize that this is not so much just a plain vaccine, this is an immune modulator. So it's helping to re-establish the equilibrium between the two sides. Now, what does this mean for um, COVID, etc.? Well, we found that uh, after the, um, Mycobacterium vacai, that there was a big demand that patients with uh, the melanoma, etc., realized that knew somebody that's worked very well. So it, this project was dropped by SR Pharma, who was supplying us with it, but taken over by a new company called Imodulin, who made a different but similar agent, now known as IMM101. And I'm very proud to say that we have uh, reported and published trials in melanoma that have given a fantastic five-year survival rate for melanoma, as good as anything else, with no side effects at all. And that we've also used it to go in combination with chemotherapy for pancreatic cancer, and this has given a great survival benefit in a randomized study. So it seems to be that just correcting this immune response together with vitamin D uh, can lead to greatly heightened vitamin, uh, greatly heightened T cell response. Now, this is important because this same graph here, uh, this is uh, essentially the um, T cell response falling off, as I mentioned, and this is the cancer rate going like that. It is also relevant for COVID because as your T cell response falls off and you catch COVID, the closer you come to 70 and above, the more likely you are to become symptomatic and die from it. And the reason that is, is as this is falling off, this is increasing. So the people who get COVID and are very ill, they are fighting it with this response, the inflammatory response, because they don't have enough of this to deal with the virus. So this overreacts, and this is what causes the inflammation in the lung and the drowning and secretions. This is an inflammation and also clots, etc. And this is why they get overwhelmed and very short of breath, and this is what caused them to die. So very briefly, I'd just like to reiterate again, from our basic work of cancer, well over 20 years in the ICBI, we have found the fundamentals of the immune system, the imbalance that really goes awry with age, and that you can correct it, and that with vitamin D and boosting the innate immune response with an agent like IMM 101, you can greatly reduce your chances to it. Now, I say that without any particular evidence of COVID, but we noticed that all our patients on IMM 101 and whom we increased the vitamin D, they kept saying to us, it's amazing, we no longer get the cold and flu. We get it every year, this is the first year since I've been on this. And this wasn't one or two or three, this was virtually everybody. And I started inquiring and found that nearly everybody who'd been on the IMM 101 program had uh, the absence of cold or flu, or if they did, it was very, very mild. So we had suggested that this agent would be very good to correct the T cell response that falls off to raise it up, and that that should be a very good agent for fighting off uh, COVID. And we already know that enhancing vitamin D makes a major difference as to whether you uh, catch COVID or whether you succumb to the symptoms of death. And so given with the boosting with the other agents, the IMM 101, we thought that, that would be a very good thing in its own right to boost the uh, T cells, the killer T cells, which are the ones that are the first line of attack for incoming viruses and agents of all sorts. And I'm delighted to say that uh, the Canadian healthcare system when we first suggested this in print, basically asked to be involved, and they are conducting a large randomized study 
in Canada on patients at risk and frontline workers to see if those who get the IMM 101 versus placebo, whether this does indeed protect them. And I hope very much that it will. Thank you. How long is that?